welcome. Wolfen NC500 and NC400 are two brand new color film products made in Germany by Orwo, a company known for black and white cinema film and their technical films for archiving and duplicating. In this video, I'm going to talk about my review and experience using both of these films. I'm going to show a lot of sample images. So if you've tuned in for this relatively niche film photography YouTube video, you might already be aware of the NC500 saga over the past year, but for the sake of record and providing some context, I will recap that briefly. I've been using Orwo black and white cinematography film for several years now. I buy the 400 foot rolls and I spool it down into 35 millimeter cartridges to use in my stills cameras. In the 2020s, we seemed to have several regional distributors and several lines of communication that were at times hard to follow. As a result of this, sourcing Orwo film stock was not always very straightforward. Lomography also repackaged some of Orwo's black and white cinematography films, namely UN54 and N74 Plus under the Potsdam and Berlin names. Then, in February of 2022, they released an update on their Instagram to address some rumors that had been brewing about restructuring, as well as to reiterate their commitment to producing film products and to confirm a rumor about producing new color film in the near future. Then, in late May 2022, they announced NC500 with a pre-order date starting on June 1st, and a shipping date estimated to be late July of 2022. On July 5th, they announced that they had begun production of NC500 and that was the day that I placed my pre-order, hoping to receive it later that July. Unfortunately, that's when the delays began. Late July came and went with no shipping and no update. In September, some film photography YouTubers seemed to be able to get their hands on a couple of roles and show us their examples. October was kind of weird because people seemed to be able to get their hands on NC500 at in-person events like Photopia in Germany, but there was no updates on the pre-orders that people had placed. Finally, December 22nd, 2022, they released an update on their Instagram feed apologizing for the delays and citing issues they had confectioning the film. They said that they had ramped up their production to 1,000 to 2,000 rolls per day and that shipping was imminent. In that same post, they claimed to have listened to us and said that moving forward they would be using plastic cassettes rather than the familiar steel ones because the plastic was more recyclable and eco-friendly. I think that it was a supply issue I just don't think that they were able to get their hands on the steel cassettes. On February 6th, 2023, Orwo introduced NC400 alongside NC500. Both of these films were also listed on Freestyle Photos website here in the US. And even though I hadn't received my pre-order shipment yet, I was still eager to try out this film and I quickly ordered two rolls each, relying on the idea that Freestyle actually had the film in stock as a larger distributor. Second week in February, I received my pre-order shipment and a day later I received my order from Freestyle as well. So now I was pretty flush with Orwo color film. One thing to note is that the different films came all packaged a little bit differently. The original pre-order came in these aluminum screw cap canisters with uh, steel cassette. This is not an Orwo film cassette. This is a Kodak Gold 200 film cassette with a Orwo sticker on it. There's obviously nothing wrong with that, but it does support my point that they simply were not able to source enough steel canisters. The NC500 from Freestyle came in a clear, unlabeled plastic canister with a plastic cassette as promised. 
the NC400 came in a cardboard box uh, in a similar unlabeled clear plastic canister with the same plastic cassette. All of this makes it feel like there are multiple hiccups on the production and the supply chains, but delayed gratification is kind of intrinsic to film photography in the first place, so I, I was just happy to get my film. One thing to note is that the ISO listed on both canisters for NC500 and NC400 is 400. Both films also say Made in Germany by Inovis Coat. My first rolls of NC400 and NC500 I shot in Utah. I was there with some friends skiing and exploring the salt flats. I shot both of them with my Leica M3, uh, which of course does not have a meter. So I metered externally and I treated it the way that I treat all of my color negative films, which is to err on the side of overexposure. The results were not bad, not great, and certainly not what I expected. Frankly, it kind of reminded me of expired film. I developed both rolls in the same tank at home in C41 chemistry with other rolls of Kodak color negative film to make sure that there was no user error in the development process. The NC400 displayed a very interesting reticulation effect that I had only experienced once before with color negative film and that was on uh, a roll that expired in 1997 that I shot for a fun experiment. Honestly I was bummed. The results were not unusable but they were not what I was expecting and I was a little bit let down. But then as I was reading more about the film and examining the data sheet for NC500, I was looking at the characteristic curve that they provided and I'll put those on the screen now in a second uh, compared to Kodak Portra 400 which is a tried and true and reliable film. As you can see the characteristic curves are very different. NC500 has a very flat characteristic curve. What this means is that you hit maximum density very quickly when you overexpose the film. When you hit maximum density, the contrast drops off immediately because exposure variability cannot be recorded as density variability uh, given maximum density has already been reached. And my experience was a lot of images that were very blown out. I still liked many of the images I got from the NC500 and NC400. They were interesting, but when I saw the results, I knew I had to try this in different lighting situations. So for the next two rolls, I shot on my Nikon FM3A, which has a really good TTL metering system, and I felt like that would help me achieve a higher frequency of exposure accuracy. And honestly, the results are some of my favorite photos that I've taken in 2023 so far. I scan all of my images on a mirrorless camera and convert them using Negative Lab Pro. One thing I will say about both of these films is that they seemed to take more time and effort in Negative Lab Pro for me to get results that I was happy with. This could be just because I'm not used to working with this film and it is very different than any other color negative film currently on the market. I'm not positive that these are actually two different films despite the different names. To me, they feel like similar iterations of the same thing, uh, but I know that from watching Smarter Every Day YouTube videos about Kodak film manufacturing and chemistry, the, the process especially for color film is very complex and costly. So I'm happy to support Orwo in putting out more color film products. Overall, I'm happy with my results and I'm happy to support a company that is producing new film products and I hope to see more from Orwo in the future. Lastly, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing, especially if you're interested in film photography content. I've got a couple of videos out and a lot more on the way and a subscription and a thumbs up really helps small channels like mine that are just starting out. If you have tried either of these films, please let me know in the comments what you think. I would love to know 
what you think of your results and how this film behaved for you. Mm -hmm.